Jennifer, do you show six o'clock on your screens? Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to the March 22nd, 2023 Committee of Whole meeting. Uh, in person, or excuse me, in person public and staff, please turn your cell phones off or to vibrate. If you wish to make public comment, approach the podium and clearly state your name for the record. Online Zoom, public and staff, please mute your online devices unless speaking on an item and to make public comment. Use the, or excuse me, to make public comment, use the raise hand function. Again, clearly state your name for the record. Please be advised that you do not need to state your address when making public comment, just your first and last name. Comments made in any chat form, both on Facebook and Zoom, will not be acknowledged. If you wish to make a public comment, you will, you will need to use the Zoom link found under the featured links tab on the city's website. Um, I did get informed that YouTube is currently down due to a technical difficulty. Um, it is still being broadcast on channel 192. Following up in regards to some of that language, um, we know that there are individuals online that if you are wishing to just uh, kind of hang back in the shadows and just watch, that's fine. But if you actually wish to speak and you have an alias under your Zoom link, you will have to identify yourself by your first and last name. Uh, this is required um, under the Wyoming Public Open Meetings Act. And with that, um, Clerk, will you please uh, read the entitlement? Item number 14, ordinance, second reading. Repealing and recre recreating code provisions prohibiting drug paraphernalia as specified and amending section 9.20.020, narcotics and drugs of chapter 9.20, Control Substances of Title IX, Public Peace and Welfare of the Municipal Code of the City of Cheyenne, Wyoming, to eliminate municipal prohib prohibitions governing marijuana. Thank you. As the sponsor of this proposed ordinance change, I do have certain responsibilities as president that I do have to relinquish the duties of the chair to the council vice president to provide an overview of the proposed changes. So at this time, I would turn it over to Vice President Escabel. Okay, Mr. President, then continue with your overview of the proposed changes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, by the way, for everybody that thinks I fall asleep online, this is what I'm doing. So, first of all, I must let everyone know that this is a debate not about legalization. If part of your public presentation was about medicinal, recreational, tax brought forth into state officers, excuse me, state coffers and licensing of dispensaries, those conversations need to happen with your state legislators. And I have invited some of the local legislators to either attend this meeting or watch it later to reflect on all you have to say. This conversation is about the municipal decriminalization of marijuana in the city limits. Both state and federal laws apply within the city limits. Someone can be criminally prosecuted as a result but through either the U.S. Attorney's Office or the District Attorney's Office. They just won't end up in Cheyenne Municipal Court. Please be advised that the ordinance change does have a 21-year-old provision to follow the guidelines of alcohol and tobacco nationwide. To give you some background on what brought us here to this meeting, I was sworn in as a city council person in 2015. Since then, members of the community have asked me to look into this subject. To be honest with you, I was a normal petitioner in 2016, and just like most of you who support this topic, I too wished it would have been handled either through the legislature or put on a ballot for the voters to decide. In 2022, I was sent an article from Wichita, Kansas, that their city had decriminalized marijuana under the same restrictions that Wyoming currently faces. I wrote to the Wichita council member who introduced the decriminalization and surprisingly, he wrote back with the changes they had made. After a review of Cheyenne city code, Wichita's look completely different. So on my birthday, I came down to city hall. I asked for a blue pen, a highlighter and prints of all references made to marijuana and paraphernalia in city code. After dissecting the paraphernalia section of city code, I realized that the city attorney who drafted this ordinance was almost working with someone in with drug enforcement experience. The code was so descriptive and some of the terms so scientific that it would marry the officer to the law and therefore not be adequately enforced. 
speaking with some other members of this governing body, they may not support the stance of decriminalizing marijuana, but some of our paraphernalia laws are overkill. As an example, I found it remarkable that the current paraphernalia code provision under section 9.20.010 C as in Charlie states that a court or other authority should engage in a 14 factor test for determining what constitutes paraphernalia. I have requested the chief of police and a designee as well as the deputy city attorney for Cheyenne to be present today as I'm sure there will be lots of questions by the public as well as the council in regards to enforcement and judicial process if this ordinance does go through. Okay, so that is my overview at this time. So in regards to public comment, because that comes first before it become, comes back to council, Please be aware that this is the only item on tonight's agenda. As you can probably guess by the media, we have other topics we are addressing. So this is the only one for this meeting. In respect of everyone's time, I do ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. Please try not to duplicate what others have said. And if you are a spokesperson for a group, please unify under one speaker and ask members in the audience to raise their hand if they are with you. If you are speaking as an individual and you believe your concerns have been addressed by other speakers, but still want to speak for the record, you can come up to the podium and state that you support or oppose. For those of you watching on Facebook Live, once again, please click, click on the Zoom link and raise your hand to speak your comments into the record. We do not accept comments through the Zoom chat or Facebook comments. And so with that, I will open it up for public comment, um, just for everybody's clarification, uh, the microphones, uh, there's a button. So once the mic turns green, then uh, that means that it's actually a live mic. And once again, please state your name uh, for the record and then both podiums are available. So whoever wants to take the first step. Mr. President, at this time, I'll relinquish the duties of the chair back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I knew I was going to miss a step. That one's small. Thank you. Sorry, that technicality does not mean that we didn't have public comment. It means whoever wants to go first. My name is Jackie Suntrop, and I support the decriminalization of marijuana in city limits. My name is Sandra Johnston, and I support the decriminalization of marijuana in city limits. Go ahead, sir. Mr. President and council members, some of you know me from a former job that I had up the street in that big, large building. I am here in support of your ordinance. Uh, I have extensive background knowledge in this area, doing lots of research for the state of Wyoming. And one of the things that I have found that affects municipalities in the state directly is the financial impact. And that is when you take an officer and you put them in a situation where they have to adjudicate uh, this ordinance, it takes them off the street for anywhere between three and four hours. We're already down in our patrol and our policing, which is a, fiscal impact on this community. There are other impacts that are indirect with this. And the and to I read the ordinance and it is written so obtusely that if nothing else, it needs to be scrapped and rewritten. So uh, on and for this, Mr. President and Council. Okay, sir, before you leave, even though you may do things differently at the Capitol, I do need you to actually yes. state your name. Sorry, names. my name is James Bird for the record. Thank spelled B-Y-R-D. Hi, my name is Dominique Lyon. I'm in support of the decriminalization. Statistics have proven time and time again that decriminalizing cannabis leads to a significant drop in teen drug use with all drugs. We also see the domestic and child abuse rates lower significantly, along with suicide rates. We see a rise in home buying. But the main, and in my opinion, the most important thing, it spreads awareness and knowledge. It provides safety for patients to be completely honest with their doctors. It also keeps families together. 
I can tell hundreds of stories about our Wyomingites being ripped from each other's arms, all because of a little pot. Treated like drug addicts when in fact cannabis gave them a better life. Cannabis can help everyone, from ex-junkies turning their life around, to doctors and teachers distressing from work, to our sick who desperately need better options. Wyoming needs help. Cannabis can fix it. And don't get me started on our hemp farmers who desperately need cannabis decriminalization. We're Wyomingites. Our grandfathers cultivated, processed, and made things of hemp. The propaganda of the 60s were based on lies and racism. It's time for Wyoming to move forward. Wyoming needs to decriminalize. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the council, I am in favor of this um, decriminalization of marijuana within the city limits. Jen, you have to say your name, sorry. My name is Jen Solis. I am a resident of Ward 1, apologies. Um, I'm in favor of this. Um, in the past couple of years, I've had uh, a number of friends who are dealing with medical issues um, right here in Wyoming. Their Wyoming doctors have suggested that um, medical cannabis would be helpful for their conditions. They both gave um, that, that idea a lot of serious, serious thought. Um, I offered to go to Colorado with them to help them procure this. Um, and both of these folks um, ultimately in the end could not do it because they were so fearful of breaking the law. Um, and while I appreciate that they are law abiding citizens as am I, um, I do feel that they could have benefited from, um, from this um, substance to be used to treat their conditions in agreement with their doctors. Um, so I support this and I, I hope you all will too. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm Pete Seekel. I've been in town for about 10 years. Um, I'm not sure where to start. When I was about 15 and a half, kid next door says, hey, want to try some pot? Back then, of course, the uh, potency was much less. I forget the percentage of less. It might have been one-tenth of what it is today. Uh, I smoked pot for about a year and a half, destroyed high school. I couldn't think of anything else but smoking dope sitting in class. And um, I did nothing. I atrophied. I did very little. Um, my, my, uh, out of 100 people in the class, I was about 97th. Um, Dad was a, a NASA engineer. I had the upbringing. I had the smarts. I went to remedial courses after all that uh, in my 20s at CSU. I did fairly well in the algebra and geometry that I just blew out of the water. Point is that you become addicted. Yeah, right. You don't. You do. It's a narcotic. You mentally or I don't know if it's a physical addiction, but you certainly depend on it. Um, it destroyed my life. It gave me a lot of pause to think that my life was going down the tubes. But I did come back. Um, the thing is that kids are now going to be well, Colorado gets uh, in 2021, got $430 million in taxes. That's what you guys need, money, on the backs of people who destroy their lives and have to find out that, ooh, it's gone. I got to fix it. Families suffer. Medically, you can get it through the, uh, the pharmaceuticals. It works just as well, but you don't destroy your lungs. One joint's worth, what, six cigarettes and tar? No, I'm not for this at all. That's Pete Seekel, and you can call me or ask me any questions you want. I got plenty to say about it. And these kids will suffer. That's beautiful. <laughs> Jennifer, I don't really know if the sound effects were intentional on this app that you loaded. So if you could pick us a different one. If you don't mind, sir, thank you for actually taking it to the two minute mark so we could get that technical difficulty solved early on. Hello, everyone. My name's Sean Murphy. Can you give us just one moment so we can hopefully find another app that doesn't do a circus tone at the very end? So one moment. I was kind of hoping for that. Thank you so much. Go ahead, sir. Yes, my name's Sean Murphy. I was the founder and publisher of Hemp Business Journal for six years. I sold Hemp Business Journal to a, a cannabis data and analytics company in D.C. called New Frontier. And I have a child who's very sick. 
is a terminal brain condition, and I'm very familiar with the entire hemp medical cannabis, recreational cannabis industry, and let's just say conversation. And what we just heard is just inaccurate. We have an endocannabinoid system. There is no medical evidence to suggest that medical cannabis is addictive as we understand narcotics to be addictive. There may be a psychological impact, but that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about decriminalization, and I'm here in support of this for medical cannabis, particularly palliative care. We know there are people in our community that are in pain and they're using opiates. We also know that medical cannabis is less severe than opiates and we know it is less addictive than opiates. So what I'm hoping and why I'm in support of this is that we, we create a pathway for people that need access to the medical side of cannabis. This is a good first step and it helps people. I have a neighbor who has a very painful neck condition and he, he is distressed because he feels he's breaking the law by, by self-medicating. He has a neurologist that isn't sure what to do. And if he was in Colorado, this would be a no-brainer that he would have access to this palliative care. So to hear someone come up and say that this is addictive and such a devastating, horrible thing for the community, it's just factually inaccurate. It's just, no, it's just inaccurate. There's, there's no evidence to support that. So I appreciate everyone's thoughts, but on the ground in palliative care, this is something that will help people. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen. Uh, President and city council members, I'm Kathleen F. Peterson. I live here in Cheyenne. Um, well, I'd like to just uh, ditto what that gentleman just said. Being an older member of this uh, community, um, I have many aches and pains. And uh, I have to tell you that, well, you can call it medical marijuana, marijuana, I don't care. It actually impacts pain and makes a difference. And I think that uh, living here in Cheyenne, we're right across the border from Colorado. Uh, it would just make sense for us to decriminalize marijuana in our county, in our city. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Hi, my name is Tom Pollock. I'm a 40-year resident of Cheyenne, and I agree with decriminalization of marijuana. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Matt, come up here. Council, everybody. My uh, name's Matt Warner. I live in Ward 3. Um, although, unlike some people, unfortunate, do have problems in life, but that comes with alcohol, anger, addiction is a thing, but Coming from myself, I have knee surgeries, I have back problems, I have all kinds of issues with, with uh, joints and pains. THC infused lotions do help. It helps a bunch. It does contain THC, which is illegal. You can be ticketed for that. Um, again, back to the addiction thing, it, people will could have problems, but that could be problems from everything. And instead of giving somebody a ticket, you know, six years or six months in jail, thousand dollar ticket. That's a lot. And that's just going to hurt somebody more and more these days, and especially if they're already down and out, you know, but if a person unfortunately does a little weak in the mind and they can't take care of themselves, you know, but look at alcohol, we flourish in alcohol in this state. You know, there's so many breweries. I'm not against alcohol one bit to each their own, but if we stay stagnant and just keep everything illegal to how it was back in like the fifties and sixties, we're never going to grow and growing. You can see with marijuana decriminalization, legalization worldwide is happening. Uh, tax revenue. There's so much for it on the income for it, for the state, for the city and for the individual that lives in the state that can benefit from this. So I am totally hundred percent for uh, this ordinance for sure. Thanks for your time guys. Sir, go ahead, please. There we go. Uh, hello, my name is AJ Gold, and I've been, I was born and raised in Cheyenne. Um, so my history with cannabis doesn't start until college. I've had friends who used it in high school, and I personally had the dare mentality of cannabis, that it's bad for you, you know, you're going to kill your brain cells, all the horrible things that cannabis can do to you. Well, once I actually started trying it, I realized it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Um, I feel like that rhetoric is very old. And 
as Wyomingites, we need to update. Um, we need to change with the times because having it be illegal while all these other states around us are legalizing it, that kind of just makes us look foolish because we're missing out on so much tax revenue. We need our roads fixed everywhere. Cannabis taxes can help with that. We need infrastructure. We need more affordable housing. We need care for our veterans. This is one of the states that has the biggest veterans. So we need to help those people. Cannabis would help with that, even if it's just medical. It's helping them with their pain, with their PTSD. Um, studies all around the world have shown that it has helped with so many mental disorders. And especially with veterans being big in Wyoming, we have an army base right here, or Air Force base, sorry, right here. So we have a lot of retirees as well. And we have a lot of older community members. It can help with their pain as well. Their dementia, all their mental disorders that they suffer from, it can help. Um, it's helped me with handling my own anxieties and my own mental disorders that I have had diagnosed just by self-medicating. It makes me less anxious. It, I can say sometimes I do feel like I'm just being lazy, but I do feel like it helps more than hurt. Thank you. Uh, Sorry. Mr. President, Council Members, Jim Ridgway, 3615 Moore Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming. The question I have is, is, is on the enforcement side, and how does that, how would our police officers, I believe that they take an oath to support the Constitution of the state of Wyoming, city ordinances or city law cannot trump state law, correct? And how would they deal with that in enforcement in the city area? I know typically you speak under other business where it kind of goes as a free flow. Um, Captain James, Mark, will you take notes of all Mr. Ridgeway's questions? And when we come back to the council, all those are going to be documented all at once, if you don't mind, sir. Or did you have anything else besides that one question? That was it, just on okay. the, uh, the enforcement side of it. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, sir. Ma'am, please. My name is Brittany Thorpe. I'm a member of the Wyoming of Wyoming Normal and an active member of the Wyoming State Bar. And I support the I support this the ordinance to change the city limits to decriminalization. I'm sorry, was not prepared to speak. Um, it's illegal for 45 minutes away. I mean, most people don't even understand they can't use it here, let alone that they're gonna get fined or jail time for it. I mean, you can't. We can't have something legal 45 minutes away and then expect people to understand that they can't bring it here and that it's going to ruin their lives here if they come here. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, do you want to come up, sir? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Jim's used to being at city council, so he's used to turning off the mic. So thanks. My name is Matthew Zaychik. I support decriminalizing marijuana in the city limits of Cheyenne. I think our law enforcement's plenty taxed enough, and I'm tired of watching our dollars go to Colorado. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. My name is Dina Inglet. Um, actually, I'm sorry. Can you lower it just a bit and restate your name? Sorry. <laughs> Vertical challenged. Okay. My name is Dina Inglet. Um, I am here today to support the legalization of, or decriminalization, I'm sorry, of marijuana. Um, I had a whole speech written, um, but everybody pretty much already talked on everything. I do want to add that back in 2019 for my family, um, marijuana changed my life. I was in a wheelchair at 300 pounds. I was told I was going to die within six months. Um, and I gave in to the Colorado hype, and here I am today, 100 pounds less, I have a job. I uh, have two businesses. Um, my husband's at work right now. He had open heart surgery in 2019, and Dr. Kennedy told him that if it wasn't for his use of mar medical med marijuana, he would have died at the age of 10. He started smoking weed at age eight. Yes, he's from California. Sorry, he votes Trump. Hate him. We vote Trump. I'm a Republican. All right. I'm sorry. We're a nonpartisan. <laughs> so. 
far as the political statements, yeah, I get it. But what I want to say is, is that it's not just one person or the other. It's not just a non-Christian or a Christian. It's not just one size fits all. The police, I've been told by many of them that they're sick of it. They're sick of ticketing us and seeing it tossed out at court. They're sick of it. They're sick of wasting their time and their energy. And we're sick of taking the risk. Thanks. Thank you. Jeremiah, come up, please. My name is, my name is Jeremiah Sundrup, and I support the decriminalization of marijuana in the city limits of Cheyenne. Thank you. Okay, since the microphones are empty, um, yeah, I mean, basically what I will do to, for clarification is everybody that's in the room that hasn't spoken yet, then I'll open the floor to everybody that's on Zoom that has their hand raised. And so once they have it, as long as pretty much we kind of um, on repeat speakers, we ask that they, uh, you know, only, uh, you know, focus on what they didn't get to say on the last time and keep it very brief. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Um, my name is Ben Hornock. I'm the House representative for House District 42 here in Laramie County. And uh, I just want to talk about one of the points for this uh, that I think needs to be understood. So when the city creates a, uh, an ordinance, we call it an ordinance. When the state creates a law, we call it a law. There, there are two different things and those are very different. And I do not think that um, constitutionally, the, the city, um, a municipality can actually function without for in an area of law that is restricted, that is against the law, without the state first dealing with that. So right now we're talking about legalizing a controlled substance that's against the law in the state of Wyoming and nationally as well. So until the federal government and the state government, more preferably the state government, actually deals with the, the, um, how they're going to define the use of marijuana, currently right now it is illegal to do, until the state deals with that, though, um, I don't think the municipality actually uh, can constitutionally. And here's why. Because by doing so, we have a, a boundary, and it's a relatively arbitrary boundary around the city of Cheyenne, or, or any city, that uh, we, we draw lines in the sand to create this city. Uh, so if I go, depending on which side of the line you're on, we're actually creating a special class of citizens within the city of Cheyenne. And constitutionally, it is not allowed to create a special class of citizens. We are all equal. Um, so I just wanna make that clear that by doing this, it's actually kind of going around the constitution. You're creating a special class of citizens here within the, the city of Cheyenne that are allowed to do something outside of the law of the state and outside of the law of the, the US. So, you know, it's very difficult. I, I would just say that, you know, I, I do appreciate listening to uh, the testimony. I think that uh, there's, it's great testimony. It's, uh, it's interesting. I appreciate you guys hearing the testimony and taking the time to allow the people to voice their, uh, their opinion. So thank you very much for that. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, Stephanie, John, can you please take down Ben's comments in regards to the constitutionality of this, please, so we can address it later. Um, thank you. Sir, come forward, please. I'm Brian Crozier, uh, born and raised in Cheyenne, lived here my whole life. Uh, I'm a dad, I'm a business owner. Um, I, I think it's ridiculous that marijuana is illegal to begin with, so I am all for decriminalizing it. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Come ahead, please. Yeah, the button until it turns green. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, hi, my name is Max Esdale. Uh, I support the decriminalization of marijuana in Cheyenne. Um, there, just to speak quickly to the to the previous point, there are dozens of precedents for local jurisdictions that decriminalize before their states follow suit. This isn't something that's novel. And if the state wants to utilize their resources to enforce the law, which is a state law, uh, then the burden falls on them, and we can still free our own local law enforcement. 
from having to enforce that. Um, the medical benefits are known for cannabis, for veterans, for seniors, for mental health, for people like my dad, uh, who was a veteran who was diagnosed with cancer. It was instrumental in his recovery, and that cannot be downplayed. We have evidence now from decades of experience from tens of millions of Americans that is effective for pain, for sleep, for anxiety, depression, for those suffering from epilepsy, cancer, and, and many more conditions. We should not deny them relief. Uh, it's a known substitute for much more dangerous substances like opioids that have killed over 1 million Americans. This is a public health crisis, and this is something that can actually help alleviate that. So I urge you to consider that. There are economic reasons, not just the taxes, but also the resources that are freed up and, and not denying people the uh, ability to have opportunities because of a criminal arrest record. There are justice reasons, like the prioritization of scarce law enforcement and judiciary resources. We've got scientific reasons, which I've alluded to. I'm, I'm happy to share uh, any references if, if they would be helpful for you in, in making your decisions, uh, and also social reasons. I mean, we can see it here. It, it, it reflects what we've heard from the University of Wyoming that you know 85% of our state supports medical cannabis. And it's time that we get this done. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, sir. Daniel, you wanna come up, please? Thank you, Mr. President and members of the council. Um, this is this is not- Sorry, Even though I know who you are, yeah, I just need you to state your name. Sure. Hi, Thank my you. name is Daniel Singh. I'm a representative in the Wyoming legislature. I represent House District 61, as well as uh, Precinct 33. Um, this is not, a light subject. This is a heavy subject that matters to so many, so many members of our community. Um, and it has tremendous gravity in the decisions that a lot of young people um, and people that move here uh, in the state uh, will make. And we need as a community to be aware of the, the harmful effects of what marijuana can do. But ultimately, I believe this is not a question of uh, what our community needs to do to address that, but but rather, this is a question of individual responsibility. This is a question of whether or not the people of Cheyenne are intelligent enough to properly handle marijuana without the rod of justice being struck against them by their government. Are we capable of making intelligent decisions when it comes to this substance, which does intoxicate people. We entrust the people of Wyoming, of, of Cheyenne, with the responsibility of acting properly with alcohol, which is proven to be a deadly substance, or tobacco, which is proven, which is a proven carcinogen. Yet we entrust that responsibility with the individual. I think we should empower the individuals of Cheyenne and if it's a step in making the people of Wyoming freer, I think that's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. you know, just for clarification, um, basically on these types of debates, we prefer no applause, cheering, or anything of that manner because it shows disrespect to the other party, whether you're pro or against. So if applause and everything else could be uh, kept to a minimum, you can all celebrate outside after the meeting is done. Thank you. My name is Jeff McVeigh. Uh, I'm a Marine Corps veteran with a 50% disability from PTSD. I've gone to the VA and have gone through several different kinds of pills. And after two years of going in there and him giving me this pill for anxiety, this pill because I can't sleep, this pill because I have bad nightmares, um, I quit taking their pills. I quit going to the VA and I bought weed and it helps. It helps. I was born and raised in this town. I've been put in jail for smoking weed in this town. Um, when I was five years old, my brothers were blowing the smoke in my face. And by seven years old, I was saying, you better smoke that joint with me or I'm going to go tell mom. Um, it helps. That's all I can say. I can do with or without it. If it's out of, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. I'm not addicted to nothing. There's not addiction whatsoever. Um, uh, I, I definitely support this completely. And I can't believe half of this town ain't in these lines ready to say something about this. I just can't believe that. 
that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, before we move on to Zoom, um, I know there's several individuals that have not spoken in the crowd here. So for um, we go to Zoom, um, does anyone want to come up to the podium and finish out the uh, personnel part of it? Uh, my name is Jeff Olson. I live in Ward 3. Uh, I just recently learned that this was this action was going to take place. And we've heard tonight about uh, silver bullet of marijuana use. And uh, I and we've heard a lot about Colorado and other states have done this legalized in other jurisdictions. And I really think that people really need to look at all the effects. You might have some temporary effects or some health effects to relieve pain, that type of thing. I understand that. But there's other effects. I was just down in Colorado today, and I, and I saw what happens when, when you decriminalize different kinds of drugs. What happens? You have more addiction. You have more homelessness. You have more crime. And the facts prove that out. In Colorado, they, they're leading the nation in a number of different crimes. And a lot of that is due to, if we want to acknowledge it or not, it's due, due to addictions. Now, if we don't think about this, think it through what we're going to do here, we're not only going to have the constitutional problems with the, within the state of Wyoming, that's going to be an issue, but, but we're going to jump into something without thinking about what are the negative aspects of this. So I really uh, urge the council really to think this through. And, uh, you know, I have some questions about specifically about, you know, the deleted language of the drug paraphernalia. Is anything going to replace that? Or what is going to happen on that if the council approves this? So I will be around and, and I can talk to anybody who wants to. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, John, Stephanie, were you in regards to the last question? Thank you. Sir, if you wouldn't mind coming up, please. Hey, uh, my name is Jacob Thorpe, and uh, I'm a Wyoming resident and a veteran, and I support the criminalization. Can you, you're taller than the microphone. Can you? That, thank you so much. Right. Um, my name is Jacob Thorpe. I'm a Wyoming resident. I'm a veteran. I support the decriminalization. It's just a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. Police should be out hunting people we're afraid of, not people we're mad at because they're lazy. It's just obscene that we're going to do this. Prohibition just doesn't work. You try and stop people from consuming a substance that they like, and they're going to do it illegally. So you're actively creating a black market for these things. Um, as another member mentioned earlier, the decriminalization and legalization of marijuana lowers teen substance use because a dispensary is not going to sell to a 16 year old, but a drug dealer will. So by getting rid of drug dealers and by decriminalizing these substances and regulating them and taxing them, you're saving children. That's all I got. Thank you, sir. Joey, if you want to come up, please. My name is Joe DeLomba. Uh, I've personally been out of work because of getting had a half a joint in my ashtray. And if you want this town built, there's a lot of guys doing construction that smoke weed and it's just a waste of time for everybody. These guys under bridges, sorry to break it to you, buddy. It ain't because they're smoking weed. That's just pharmaceuticals. You don't have all the problems that, that are getting pushed in a, in a bad way because it's weed. This is tobacco and pharmaceuticals making propaganda so that weed wouldn't be a useful thing in society. And it's still going today. It's outdated. Like the byproducts from marijuana can be used for building. Oh, there's, there's, we don't need to get into it. If this just for decriminalization, I support it because look at all the bars in this town. I could go right now and buy enough alcohol to get everybody in here drunk and somebody's going to die from it. But that's totally fine. Everything's totally fine with it. Like this, it's just an outdated thing and it needs to be taken care of. So that's all. Thank you so much. Sir, if you'd come up, please. My name is James Draper. I speak on behalf of a group. Um, okay. Thank you uh, so much for doing <laughs> Thank you for so much for following the instructions. Hey, anyone else that wants to join my group can. Um, I'm in support of the decriminalization of marijuana. Anyone else that wants to raise their hand, do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. 
Okay, once again, it looks like our podiums are, are empty unless um, somebody that has not yet spoken before we go to Zoom. So I will open up once more for, oh, oh okay, Mr. Barnes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and speak, uh, Jeff Barnes. I'll speak from a law enforcement perspective and from a military perspective. I've been in law enforcement for 30 years, seen extreme violence in regards to marijuana and all the other compounds that come with it. There's a lot of information, but one thing I'd like to direct people's attention to, and I'm not going to take too much time, but Alex Berenson, New York Times reporter, and most people know the leaning of the New York Times. He wrote this book, Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mental Illness, and Violence. He has an astronomical amount of scientific research annotated in a bi biography in the back that does not support the decriminaliz decriminalization of marijuana, because what that leads to is legalization of marijuana. We have been sold a bill of goods by politicians, the media, normal, and all these other groups about how wonderful marijuana is. And I can tell you firsthand the amount of homicides that I've handled because of marijuana and others. I'll give you a real quick one. A couple of years ago, we had one out east in Laramie County over a drug deal. Individual was shot, set on fire, and thrown in a lake for a pound of marijuana. So anyway, I am completely against it. And I know most people here are for it, but I've got friends that smoke marijuana. And I could tell you, it, it causes extreme paranoia. If you have any type of bipolar, schizophrenia, any of those type of things, it exacerbates that problem dramatically. And the hospitals are being overrun with narcotics use in this country. And from a military perspective, we are losing our edge against China and everybody else because people cannot join the military because of significant drug use. And that's Jeff. it. Okay, thanks, Jeff. All right, anyone else in the room before we go to Zoom? Okay, going once, twice. Okay, very good. Jennifer, do we have any hands raised on Zoom? We do? Okay, I will go ahead and let you um, let them introduce themselves. Mr. Jason Bloomberg, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is uh, Jason Bloomberg. I am a physician uh, in uh, Laramie County. I have served uh, for more than 20 years here. And um, I am speaking in favor of decriminalization. And I'd like to draw a distinction between decriminalization and legalization. All this ordinance would do is mean that uh, you would no longer be expending uh, city resources to pursue criminal charges against people. It does not make marijuana use or possession legal. That would have to come from the state uh, and possibly the federal government. But it would eliminate a pretext uh, for search and arrest. It would eliminate uh, the stigmatization of people that can cause them to have difficulty finding future employment. Um, if I treat somebody who has uh, cancer and they've had their appetite suppressed from chemotherapy, um, I can give them a prescription for a drug called Marinol, and it is a marijuana derivative and it costs them between $1,500 and $1,800 per month in order to have an appetite so that they can nourish themselves. They could go across the border to Colorado and for about a 10th of that cost, uh, give themselves a supply of alternative sources of that same THC compound. So um, my point is that Decriminalization is not going to un open up the gates of reefer madness. It is going to save the city money and it may begin the process of the state and possibly the federal government 
taking a closer look at uh, decriminalization and even legalization and regulation of something that's widely already in use. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jennifer, do we have any other individuals online? Very good. Next person, when you're ready. Mr. Jones, you should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Jones. I represent a group called I Can, which is Wyoming Citizens Against Normalization. Uh, Mr. President and council members, I really appreciate this time. I will try to be as quick as possible. 90% uh, of the testimony I heard today has been anecdotal without any factual backup, and much of it is wrong. This is not a debate on the merits or non merits of marijuana, as the ordinance proposes a supposedly a decriminalization bill. In most cases, when you're talking about decriminalization around the country, you're talking about changing a law that has harsher penalties for small amounts of possession. Uh, and this usually results in changing that to no jail time and a fine or something like that. For first possession users, small quantities. That's usually what decriminalization means. That's a far cry from legalization. I don't think the debate here is about legalization or not. However, the way the ordinance is written, it in effect almost legalizes it. Uh, the quantities involved are large. With today's high potency THC, which is not your grandma's weed of the 70s, this stuff is uh, uh, entirely different than anything that was uh, known about marijuana less than five years ago. And uh, contrary to what people are saying, in every single state where they have decriminalized uh, marijuana uh, use has increased among youth and across all demographics. And uh, crime today in the United States, there's almost no one who is in prison for very small amounts of marijuana. That is a fiction. So this ordinance is a, a Trojan horse to let legalization. It in effect could make Cheyenne a sanctuary city for marijuana use. And uh, it goes against state law, it goes against federal law. I think it's a slippery slope and it's a really, really bad idea without a lot more thought put into this. So I encourage you all as several people have said to look at this very, very closely because the unintended consequences are severe. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And if you could, um, just for clarification, uh, the Zoom link was kind of fragmented in regards to your conversation. So if you have that speech prepared, if you could uh, email it to all of council so that uh, we can read your comments, that would be greatly appreciated. I don't know if online, if they could understand you clearly, but it was a bit garbled here. So if you could put those thoughts in writing and email them to all of council, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. I will do that. I live out in the wilderness, so I'm lucky to be here at all. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for uh, thank you for calling in, uh, Jennifer. When you're ready with the next participant, please. Uh, Mr. Freeman, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you, uh, Matt Freeman. Um, I'm speaking in opposition to this. Uh, I tend to be um, a lover of our constitutions and uh, rule of law, and since currently this is a Schedule One controlled substance. You know, that's going to have to be addressed. Um, I'm not going to speak to how I feel or my opinion on pros and cons from a medicinal point of view, but just I think Mr. Hornock uh, summed it up rather well when he spoke about um, the, the constitutionality of having a uh, city ordinance that goes against the state statute and um, potentially a constitution. I think it just breeds uh, uh, confusion and um, it's it's kind of funny when you know people mention you know what they can do in Cal in Colorado, uh, yet they get confused about the own their own rules in their own town. And so, you know, I, I think we really need to be educated about you know where we live, and what we can and what we can't do uh, based on the rule of law. So, uh, thank you for your time. Um, have a good evening. You're welcome. Thank you, sir, for calling in, Jennifer, X person. Stacy, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yes. Stacy Schultz, general manager of Platt Hemp Company, soon to be opening here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Veteran-owned company. We are in support 
of this ordinance passing. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, next person, please. I don't see any more hands raised. Okay, so on Zoom, we're gonna do uh, another uh, call. So for anybody that may be watching this on Facebook Live, if you can go to the Zoom link, um, or if you're on uh, Zoom right now, if you do wanna speak before I um, open up the floor here in the council chambers again for just a couple follow brief comments, um, and then we will uh, continue on with the meeting. So um, anybody else that logged in and since, I spoke, Jennifer, or no? Okay, good. Carrie Satterwhite, you should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you. My name is Carrie Satterwhite, and I am on the board of Wyoming Normal. Uh, I think I would just like to say that we are totally in support of this. Um, for the most part, I think that people would find that the sky will not fall. People who need cannabis for medical purposes or use cannabis are going to use it, whether it's legal or not. Mostly they will take the risk. So I don't think we're going to see big changes, really. We are in support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jennifer, did anyone else come online? Okay, very good. Okay, so Dominique, you you want to do yours briefly, and then Sir in the back. Um, I know you said you had some just follow up questions, so if you can limit it to this to say one minute this time. Thank you. Go ahead, please. All right. So the re last yeah. person. Sorry. Well, just state your name, just as you did the first time. I'm Dominique Lyon. I'm with Legalize Wyoming, and the person who just went made a good point. Stoners, the people who are smoking it. They're going to do it regardless if it's legal, decriminalized, any of it. But you guys are making it to where the good people, the people that are using the sorry, the people that are using the ointments, all of the type of medical like medications at the pharmacies that you guys are backing, they're coming out with THC prescription pills. So you're taking it from people who desperately need it. And a gentleman said something about cigarette smoke being a hundred times worse than cannabis. Factually speaking from the government websites, smoking cannabis reduces the carcinogenic effects of tobacco smoke. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, if I know that you, you when you reached your two minute mark, sorry, I can't remember your, your right behind, yes, you, Sea Hill, sorry. So, oh, Sea Kill, okay. Sorry, Mr. Sea Kill. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Right. Because you reached your limit and you said, he, I didn't know if you wanted an additional minute to speak since you. But you have to come up to the mic and introduce yourself again. I'm sorry. Uh, that's Pete Seekel. And uh, generally, you know, I can take all the razzing you want. I lived it. It destroyed my high school. I had to go back and make it up. And that's not just me, but there are kids that'll eat the stuff and steal it from your homes wherever, if they're, you know, tiny kids. There are a lot of stories in this, you know, across the country about that. And it's not, you can do what you want within the law. I don't, I do care about that, but it's me personally and you personally. You haven't lived your life yet. I'm 67 years old. I've been through it. I've done it all. I gave up drinking too because my life came between zero and four milligrams per deciliter of glucose in my system. I quit drinking too to live and I've lived a much better life. I'm also a disabled U.S. Navy veteran. I've been aches and pains all my life. I don't need pot to help me do anything at all. I've learned through Jesus Christ to live and to love people. I love you all. Yeah, I do. I've lived your life. I know. And I've been through hell. I haven't been to jail yet. I try to stay away from that. But the thing is, people have to live well. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness within restrictions that keep you from dying quickly. My brother John 
was on heroin. He was also diabetic. And he died at 39 years old. He smoked lots of pot, drank lots. But your life is limited. You have a capacity when you're born. And from 100% down to nothing. He died at nothing at 39. Two myocardial infarctions, et cetera, et cetera. No legs because he didn't eat well because he couldn't. He was too high and too drunk. He was a wonderful kid, but he taught me a lesson. I'm just trying to live my life and my testimony for you to see. I don't mean to cut you off. I know we started the clock a little late. Oh. So it's, oh. I watched, yeah, so I was, it was over your time, but um, yeah, if you can just uh, finish it up and well, that's fine. 15 That's seconds. good. Okay. No, I've said enough. Okay. I've said plenty. All right, but good. I've lived the life already. You guys haven't yet, but you'll see. Marriages, children, life, their life, and yours together. Love. Okay, we will uh, continue over. Sir, you haven't actually spoke yet, have you? Okay, so yeah, great. Uh, welcome, come up, and if you please state your name, please. Hello, my name is Matthew Ringo, and I support the decriminalization of marijuana. Um, unlike many of you, I was a military brat. I grew up in Air Force bases around the world. Um, started smoking pot when I was 13. It did not destroy my life. I smoked pot throughout high school. It did not destroy my life. I then joined the military. I retired after 24 years, went to college. I have now a successful career outside of the military, and I enjoy smoking marijuana for medical reasons, not for recreational. But to think that you would take me away from my family of 24 years because I want to go and enjoy something that I know is going to make me feel better. It's going to help me put to sleep at night. And it's going to reduce all the thoughts that I have in my head. And to think that you would take me away from that, my family, and my health for the simple fact that I wanted to smoke one joint when I went to bed at night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And sir, obviously, I'm going to let you go first because you haven't spoken as well. I know these two gentlemen have. So because this is your first time speaking, you do get two minutes. Everybody over here that's spoken before gets one. So continue okay. on, sir. And make sure to state your name, please. Okay. Is this high enough? Um, my name is Treshawn Allen, and I am a resident. I've lived here for like two years. But ever since I moved here, my mom has had problems with epilepsy. Epilepsy is a disease where so let let's say these lights were to flicker right now, I would have a seizure and then go to the hospital and would need medical care. The only problem with that is there is no medical care for epilepsy because it is a neurological disease. And the only medical care that we have for it currently is medical marijuana. The only problem is my mom can't take it here because it is illegal. And the with the decriminalization of medical marijuana, my mom would be able to basically assist to her seizures. And then also, I would like to add to that, the decriminalization of medical marijuana would not only help the younger generations because <laughs> instead of going to drug dealers, they would have to go to gas stations where they won't sell it to them. We are putting people, we are putting younger generations in situations where they have, where they will be going to drug dealers and people who don't care about their personal well being. Rather, instead, we could instead send them to a place where they couldn't get it in the first place. And then on top of that, I would like to add mental illnesses, anxiety, bipolar, PTSD, as many others have said before, it is assisted with the use of marijuana. While yes, there are problems with crimes, those crimes are not caused by the people who are taking those, take, uh, taking the mar using the marijuana for those mental illnesses. Those are instead crimes that are caused by people who are drug dealers, people who are trying to intend harm on the community you are helping in the first place. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, we'll go over here. And once again, because all of you have spoken previously, please limit it to one minute. Jennifer, can you, I know you're a one woman show back there. Oh, it has to be up there. Cap Captain James, can you do the timer so that Jennifer can actually monitor everything else, please? Oh, thank you. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, David. Okay, 
All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Go President, ahead. members of the council. Uh, we heard a little bit of context there about life experience. And I just want to share, I got into all of this, into the hemp industry 10 years ago, and it was as a hospice volunteer in the VA. Um, and that was where we're, we're talking about people that are in pain. And this is real palliative care, people in end of life care. And this is where we've seen a lot of success in Israel, where we have real serious PTSD and, you know, veterans that have had major combat injuries. And this ultimately is what I think we're talking about. So when we hear this as a veteran issue, and we hear veterans saying that this is the sky is falling and all these horrible things are going to happen, that's just not the case. The evidence is, is contrary to that. It's helping. It's helping people at end of life. And these are people that have had major life experience. These are combat veterans. So I'm here as their advocate because I've seen this be effective in those situations, but it's very difficult to come. I've moved back to Wyoming the last two years to, to be here and see, see where we're at as a state. I'm gonna keep advocating for this, for palliative care, for the medical side. And I think that this ordinance is a first step. And it, it really is a symbolic gesture that we understand this issue in Wyoming and that there's those that can and should have access to this medically. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, I don't believe you've spoken yet. So David, yeah, can you say change it to two minutes so he gets all of his time, please? <laughs> My name is Gary Brown, and I've been listening, and I hear a lot of misconception. A lot of people think this is going to make it to where it's legal for them to do this. It's not. It's still illegal. And it's going to cause them more legal problems because if you go outside the city limits, now you got a problem. You think you're okay. It's not. You're going to have some serious legal problems. And they're saying that the people using the drugs are not a problem to the law, it's the dealers. I have family in Colorado. I came from Colorado. And they have seen the home invasions go up incredibly down there for people stealing from people to pay for their marijuana that they can't afford to get. And on top of that, the, the um, intoxication behind the wheel has gone through the roof and the accidents that have been related to marijuana in vehicles has more than doubled what alcohol was. It's out of control. People think that this is okay, it's not. And when you make it legal, people just think they can do it anywhere. They can't, it's still public intoxication. This is gonna create incredible problems for people. It doesn't make it better. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Bird, if you'd come up and introduce yourself once again, please, and you are limited to one minute. David, will you reset his time, please? Thank you, Mr. President and Council for the opportunity to speak again. I've heard a lot of interesting comments tonight. Uh, most of them I would classify as anecdotal. There is no research to to back up almost anything that I've heard in here. But let's go back down to the facts. From where I used to sit at the state level, we look at fiscal responsibility. You people who sit up here in front of me on this council have the fiscal responsibility to this community and your constituents to make sure that the money is spent correctly on making this a safe city to live in. This ordinance deals with decriminalization. It is not a legalization. The resources of the city, police, fire, and judges that will be involved in this will cost lots of money to adjudicate things that this will alleviate. In the end, it will be something that the city and the, uh, needs to have happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, if you'll come up and state your name once again, and uh, since you've spoken before, um, David, if you can hit the button when he's ready. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, my name is Max Estale. 
Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, this is such an important issue for so many people here, as we've already seen tonight. Um, this is decriminalization, that's correct, uh, but please do not underestimate our ability to understand what that means. Uh, I think that you know the citizens can fully comprehend the difference between legalization and decriminalization. Uh, a lot of, of the uh, anecdotal evidence that, or uh, the uh, suggestions we've heard that uh, youth use is going to increase are not borne out by evidence. And I'm, I'm happy to cite sources. In fact, I, I will follow up with sources that we have. There are statistics available that go beyond our ability to just stand here and, and make wild claims. Um, you know, my mom worked for the VA for many years as a doctor, and she was not able to speak with many veterans who would have benefited from this. And I, I really don't want us to, to underestimate the importance that, that it has on people's quality of life. Uh, and as far as the, the paranoia, people are paranoid because it's illegal. They're worried they're going to get thrown in jail for it. And the violence is also because it's illegal. So you're bringing criminals in. So please keep that in mind. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, so Jennifer, did anybody raise their hand since the last time? Okay, so since no one is at the podium, we will um, go to Zoom once more. So Jennifer, and if you can let me know if they've spoke before, or if this is their first time so we can set the clock accordingly. So if you'll introduce the first person. Um, Carrie Satterwhite has her hand raised and she spoke once before, so we'll just keep it at one minute. Carrie, you have one minute, please. Thank you, Mr. President and Council. Uh, I would just like to touch on a couple of things. There is a pharmaceutical called Marinol. Uh, they go on and on about the marijuana and the percentage of THC in the marijuana in plant form is considerably lower, even if it was, say, at 30%, which would be pretty high. Marinol is okay, Carrie's actually calling from northern Wyoming. She's in Ralston, so I'm going to give her some leniency that um, she probably lost connection up in the bighorns. So thank you, Carrie. Jennifer, is there anybody else? I'm Mr. Freeman, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yeah, hello again, Matt Freeman, I'm still opposed. Um, I think it's interesting. This is a decriminalization across the board. And I mean, we haven't made a distinction here whether it's medicinal or recreational. So maybe we need to clean up some of this language and, and you know, address it from that point of view. We, we still have the rule of law issue to deal with. And a, uh, the, the city council has not only a fiscal responsibility, but a legal responsibility uh, upholding the constitution of the state of Wyoming. So, you know, uh, there's lots of things. And, and I think it's always fascinating when we use terms uh, that we throw out there, anecdotal. I, I'm not even sure what that means. So thank you and have a good evening again. Thank you, sir. Jennifer, did you have anyone else with their hand raised? Okay, very good. Already going once in the room for anyone that has not spoke or spoke before. Okay, it looks like there is nobody coming up to the podium. One more time, to Jennifer, I hate to see doing this because I keep watching walk across the room. I just don't want to leave anyone out. Is there any hands raised? Um, Carrie did raise her hand again. Do you want me to give it a shot one more time? Um, actually, Carrie, um, because of your connection in northern Wyoming, um, if you could uh, actually email um, everything that you had prepared uh, to the city council, I can provide you all those email addresses so that you can reach out to us. So, because I'm just worried your connectivity is going to uh, lapse out again. So, I'm not cutting you off. I just um, know where you're coming from. Okay, and then after Carrie, was there anyone else? No one, okay, very good. Seeing as how uh, there is also no one at the podium, uh, the chair would entertain a motion, please. Move to approve. Moved by Councilman Roybal, seconded by uh, Councilman Escobel. Uh, comments from council, please. Okay, I will kind of um, just like always, I'll work from the left first or my left and then move to the right. So Dr. Aldrich, if you will set the tone for us, please, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, President Johnson, I, I guess we've heard a lot tonight about decriminalization. We've heard a lot about um, legalization, medical uses for palliative care as well as for medical care. And I think at the end of the whole conversation, we have to remember that it's, we're really talking about decriminalization. Um, 
I, as a educator in our community for many years, I've seen a lot of young people who have had their lives impacted um, because of um, tickets or because of paraphernalia or residue in the paraphernalia. Um, I, I guess I'm concerned that I really believe this is a legislative issue, and I hope that Representative Hornock and Representative Singh will uh, take this, what they're hearing as also Representative Trujillo, who walked in, um, that you would take this back to the legislature and let them know that there is a concern. I saw where Casper um, was had also looked at taking up this topic, and um, I think that that it's going to be an ongoing issue. And I know that Representative Olson has worked on some legislation uh, previously on medical marijuana, um, but I think that it's a, a definitely a conversation that we need to have. But I did have a conversation this uh, week. I had the opportunity to. Uh, visit with uh, law, some law enforcement here in our community. I'm not sure that this is going to be as beneficial as what you may imagine, even if it's decriminalized. What was explained to me was that um, right now, it's very rare that our law enforcement officers are um, seeking out people who have uh, just for marijuana usage, usually that that's connected with other crimes and other ticketed items. I believe that uh, Chief Francisco sent out an email this afternoon that showed in the last year, I think there's only been three tickets written that were strictly paraphernalia related. Um, I think we're creating an issue where there's really not an issue. I think last year, if I remember correctly, we had right around 300 tickets that were issued and uh, over 200 of those were um, associated with other crimes. It wasn't just for marijuana usage. Um, so if this were to, if this ordinance as it's presented um, were to uh, and be passed by this body and go into effect, my understanding is that these uh, tickets now, uh, rather than being a city uh, issuance of a ticket um, and you go and you pay your ticket and it's taken care of, you don't even have to show up in court right now, um, that it would actually um, trigger things to go into the county court system where they, you actually do have to appear in court. Um, so you can't just pay a ticket. You actually have to take the time off work, show up in the courtroom um, and stand in front of a judge. And after three times of doing that, it becomes a felony. And those records are not expunged from young peoples that are under 18, um, that from their criminal records. I'm really concerned that if this is enacted, it's actually going to be more damaging and do more harm to individuals in our community um, then if we continue, um, does this title need to be cleaned up? Probably so. But I'm not sure that um, this piece of legislation that uh, my colleague um, has presented is going to solve that problem. And I, it's very troubling to me that I keep hearing people say, this is the first step. We need to take the first step. I think that um, there's a lot of evidence that shows that the first step leads to the second step, which leads to the third step, which leads to the fourth step. And that may be down the road, but that's for the state legislature and for the voters of Wyoming to decide not for this body. So for that reason, I'll be a no vote. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Cook, please go forward. Uh, Mr. Chair, first of all, I want to do, uh, apologize to you and, and uh, our colleagues, as well as everybody else that's, that's uh, come on whatever side of the issue that you're on. Uh, tonight, I apologize for, for my tardiness. Um, I had a, a work-related a, a day job, so to speak, a work related uh, meeting at uh, six o'clock. So I do apologize for my tardiness. Um, like everyone else, I have have uh, I've seen all the emails um, for a lot of the comments. I know we'll hear more from a lot of you uh, in the coming weeks, uh, the coming days, uh, definitely to uh, to the meeting uh, next Monday. I have the materials up here, which I very much appreciate. Um, you know, much much like uh, my colleague from uh, from Ward Three. You know, I've 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 worked in human services for the better part of about twenty four years. Uh, whether that be uh, as a probation officer, which yes, I was I was I was one of those guys once, um, and and as a dad, frankly, of of uh, you know someone in their early twenties and someone in their late teens, um, so. You know, there, there are a lot of things uh, with this subject to, to weigh, quite honestly. Um, I want to echo the, the comments of my colleague. You know, I, 
I still have a lot of questions. I still have a lot of concerns about this. Um, you know, we are, you know, going into second reading. Um, I do believe there, there's a lot more information to be gathered. I think, I think we owe it to the community again, uh, no matter whether you're for or against, I think we, we owe it to, uh, to everyone to, to do our due diligence, to continue to listen, whether to be to law enforcement or uh, medical professionals, um, you know, about this issue. You know, I, I'm really not sure where I'm going to come down on this. I think as I sit here tonight, uh, in, in order to further the conversation along, I, I want to support this tonight in order to continue the conversation. Um, but frankly, I don't know where that leaves me going into Monday night and, and further. Uh, I do still have a lot of questions. Uh, like you said, Dr. Aldrich, I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, that need to be answered. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, if I'll feel this, feel the same way on Monday, but, uh, tonight, uh, in order to further the conversation along, I do certainly want to, uh, to support this this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Escobel, go ahead, please. And thank you, Mr. President, through you. Uh, going back to uh, my days in the legislature when I was sponsoring the Cancer Control Act, uh, we did hear from a lot of physicians and experts uh, about how uh, the medical use of marijuana helped with cancer patients when they were going through chemotherapy. It alleviated the nausea, the, the drugs that they were given back then for uh, chemotherapy helped. So uh, when we looked at the legalization of marijuana, uh, it actually passed the House of Representatives. It had enough votes to pass the House of Representatives. It was uh, a budget session, so it needed two thirds. Uh, if I'm correct, right, Mr. Bird, it didn't get enough uh, votes for introduction then. Uh, so there was a lot of support in the legislature, and that was for legalization at the time. And uh, now, in these past 10 years, the country has really ended up in an opioid epidemic, and, and there's no denying that. Uh, someone gets uh, an injury of some sort, uh, goes to a doctor, and they get prescribed pain medication, and then uh, after a while, when the they're not given that prescription anymore. They turn to harder drugs and they end up addicted to things like heroin. Uh, by having the choice of being able to alleviate their pain with something that was legal, something that's grown, it's been on this earth ever since the earth has been here. Uh, I feel it's a lot better than having something that's chemically altered to alleviate pain. Uh, and uh, we have come a long way in, in the country and uh, the constitutionality between uh, legalization and decriminalization has, uh, I think has precedence already by city ordinances in other places of the country. And that's a direction that I think most of the people in Wyoming support. Fortunately, the representatives of the people uh, haven't seen the positive impacts of it, I guess, and they vote no. So it's, it's my hope that eventually at the state level we'll see some movement on that, but it takes uh, more uh, of this conversation at that level. So I urge you to contact the legislators and there's a couple of them here that you can speak to now. So I'll be supporting it for second reading. Thank you, sir. Mr. White, please. Mr. President, question for our city attorney. Um, Stephanie, could you clarify, uh, there were a couple of questions on the constitutionality of whether or not we could e even do this. Uh, if, if we did this by ordinance, if it would be um, legal, is that something that you can address? 
Mr. President, through you to Councilman White, Stephanie Boster, Cheyenne City Attorney. What the proposed change to this ordinance does is it actually um, prevents the city prosecutor from, from prosecuting marijuana-based offenses in the Cheyenne Municipal Court. It won't make marijuana legal in Cheyenne. It will still may remain illegal, which means those cases will be brought to the state circuit or district court, depending on drug quantities. What it does is it prevents um, the Cheyenne Police Department from sending those tickets to the Cheyenne Municipal Court. It is therefore legal. Um, it's, it's a legal ordinance under state statute. It's not a violation of the state constitution because it doesn't decriminalize marijuana in the city of Cheyenne. Thanks for that clarification, Stephanie. And uh, I have a second question. Can you, oh, excuse me, Mr. President, through you, could, uh, how many cases has the city prosecutor prosecuted in the last year, two years? Mr. President, through you to Councilman White, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, we don't have those numbers. There's no way in full court to really uh, identify how many cases were actually prosecuted. We do have the Cheyenne Police Department here who can uh, talk about how many tickets they've written in the last year related to marijuana possession. Go ahead, Chief. Mr. President, through you to Councilman White, Mark Francisco, Cheyenne Police Chief. In the last year, um, so I just have the numbers for 2022, um, we've uh, dealt with 312 cases, 250 of those being in the municipal court. Um, I don't know the resolution of those, but that is, uh, as you can see, the majority of those are set in municipal court. As far as, and uh, in, in those are those are merely tickets. Um, as far as arrest numbers, there have been 62 arrests, and uh, every single one of those arrests actually you know, has other charges. They weren't marijuana charges. So um, primarily, so 62 people went to actually to jail, but they, uh, the marijuana was just an answer, ancillary charge to um, more serious crimes. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I think, I think my uh, colleague from board three really articulated it well. Um, full disclosure, I've got no problem with marijuana, um, particularly medicinal. Um, I think it should be uh, allowed, but that's certainly not something this body can decide. That has to be done either at the state legislative level or via the ballot. And, you know, if it makes the ballot one day, I'll vote for it for medical. Um, other, I do have issues about the legalization of, of uh, the substance. But uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about for this particular ordinance is creating more bureaucracy for our local police and um, city attorney's office than all, what already exists. So for that reason, and, and I agree with Councilman Cook, I. I I do think the con the conversation uh, needs to be continued. I am very much interested in uh, cleaning up uh, an archaic um, paraphernalia uh, part of this. Uh, that that I think I could support, but um, as it stands now, I'm I'm going to be a no tonight. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And Mr. Roybal. Mr. President, just a couple of quick questions. First one is, where did this come from? Actually, that was from the, uh, sorry, through you, through you President Johnson. Um, that actually is uh, produced by the, is it called the Chiefs and uh, Sheriff's uh, Group that Andrea Parsons, who works for that group, um, offered these to us this afternoon. So I handed those out. These were not from that group. These were from President Johnson. I'm just just reading through this thing. It's there's no mention of an author. There's no mention of studies. It's just bullet points of all the bad things that could happen ever. So if I might might add to that, I, but I, other than that, Chief, just from my edification, what are your thoughts on this? 
<laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you knew I invited you here for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, as, so I'm going to leave my personal opinion out of this. I don't think it's appropriate, um, if, if I might. Um, as far as the mechanics of what may or may not happen here, um, and Dr. Aldrich touched on this, we will be left with our only option is to cite things into state court. Um, that, you know, when, when we raise our hand and take our oath, we swear to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the state of Wyoming, along with the ordinances of the city of Cheyenne. So it, it does not relieve us of our responsibility to enforce those laws. So I, I think the way it stands right now, from our perspective, not much will change. We'll just check a different box on the ticket and it'll, it'll go into state court versus municipal court. Um, so my, my feeling is not much would change from our perspective. It, it would essentially um, operate largely the same. Thank you. Council Labor, did you have any comments you'd like to make? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I think that uh, the chief just uh, really made things clear. And I think that's what we need here. Um, I look at this issue as a one of many years with many, many impacts in many ways. Certainly the medical aspect of it has been shown in my experience to be overwhelming over the years across the country. And that uh, that's really important. That isn't what we're dealing with here tonight. What we're dealing with here tonight is what the chief just told us that his officers will check a different box and send that case to the state court, which in our case is the circuit court. So I think that we have to consider what we're telling the people and what I would certainly tell people, is marijuana legal in Cheyenne if we pass this? Yes and no. Is marijuana illegal in Cheyenne if we pass this? Yes and no. And so that the lack of clarity is really the issue here of the specificity of our laws. It is not a personal opinion. It is not a feeling. It is a matter of law. And in this case, we can see that uh, there's tremendous interest in changing that state law. I think I'm not really familiar with uh, the federal level, but of course that is uh, under discussion as far as I know as well. That's where it comes from. So obviously we're not going to do uh, what I think people expect here if we pass this, which is that uh, there would be no enforcement. The chief just told us something different. And I think that that's something we wanna think about with our officers on the street and their experiences. Are we giving them, or we're not giving them, are we mandating that they take certain actions? I think that it's clear that the oath that's sworn to the, those laws in the state of Wyoming is a real serious thing. I also expect that uh, if the trends I see across the country continue, someday marijuana will be legal in the state of Wyoming, but it's not tonight. And that is really the key here. Are we making a statement? Are we uh, encouraging discussion? A great discussion, no doubt about it, across the board. But we don't pass ordinances to send a message. We create laws for our officers to enforce. And in this case, what we're doing here is gonna confuse a heck of a lot of people. And they're gonna think, oh, gee, they passed it. Um, I think I can light up where I want. Not the case, as the chief just noted. So if there is, uh, 
certainly interest on a lot of people to see this, this law changed. I think it's been pointed out here that it's at the state level. It isn't at the city level. And the confusion that's gonna come out of this is going to be um, pretty serious, I think. So when I look at the responsibility that I have to vote on a law, I recognize that we don't have the authority here in the city of Cheyenne to legalize marijuana or decriminalize marijuana. It is a question of state law. So um, I really appreciate your comment, Chief, because that was really uh, what we learned at your office the other day. And I don't wanna put the officers in the position of wondering which element of that code they should enforce or not enforce. And I don't think it's uh, a good idea for us to be tweaking the city code for the purpose of presenting a message. I think that message is gonna be heard loud and clear. And I know that uh, there are very valid arguments here in favor of um, what I expect is gonna happen here someday, which is major change in the law, but it, not here, not tonight, not with my vote. This is not how we operate our city code. And therefore I'm gonna be a no vote on this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Seagrave. Mr. President, I'll be very brief. Most of the things I wanna say have already been said. Uh, someday when it's legal for medical marijuana, I think most of us would support that. We heard things tonight about dollars going to Colorado and our, these dollars could fix roads. This has nothing to do with that. We're not gonna sell anything here. So those are all moot points. I guess we get back to why are we doing this? It's not gonna change anything. Um, the final thing I'll say is police chief and all of his staff and every one of us took an oath to support the constitution of the state of the United States and uh, we'll see tonight how many of us were serious about that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's follow up. Okay, if you wouldn't. Uh, Brian, is yours on? Um, yes, I did. Okay. I did have a question, a follow up question. And Mr. President, I don't know if, if yourself or maybe the city attorney, potentially the police department would have an answer for this. I don't believe we have anyone from the circuit court or the district court here. Um, but you know, this does this does beg the question, and I, I am starting to starting to wonder. Um, you know, if we take into account the the frankly the budgetary situation that the circuit court and the district court are under, Madam Attorney, I guess I'll just address it to you. And if, if there's not an answer, I, I certainly understand that. Um, but I, I do think, you know, with, with the dearth of, of cases that are, are certainly probably going to be going from the municipal court to the circuit or, or district court level, um, that could, you know, we've heard for several years that, you know, there are budgetary issues at, at that level. Uh, especially, you know, here locally in our district, in our in our circuit, in our county. Um, so I'm just wondering, have there been any dis discussions, whether by the sponsor or or your office or or your your department, um, with the district attorney, with with the county, you know, with the county attorney, with with those those higher courts that are directly above us? Um, what is what is the budgetary and the manpower uh, impact going to be? Or what could it be, you know, anticipated to be, you know, with with such a change? Because I I do believe, you know, if if we are to believe what we've heard uh, from the previous district attorney, uh, as opposed to you know who we now have in place, um, I I do believe that it is a concern as far as uh, you know they they have a hard enough time you know prosecuting the cases that are going through there now. Um, so for me, that is a consideration. Have we had any? conversation with those folks on, on what the, the possible outcomes could be that they could anticipate. Mr. President, through you to Councilman Cook, in answer to your question, no, I'm not, um, I have not spoken with the circuit court or the district court judges 
of, I will meet with the district attorney on Friday and I will ask her that question, what she anticipates the possible ramifications could be. I will tell you that the uh, city prosecutor for the city of Cheyenne is very burdened with cases currently. Um, she is currently um, at around 600 cases, we estimate, and she should be about 350. Uh, the municipal court is prosecuting third time DUIs, which has never happened um, in the past couple of years. So there, there is enough work to go around, that's for sure. Um, this uh, seems to be in comparison a small amount of cases. So I think the uh, the results could be something that the two of us could probably work to um, find some balance in. But I will find those answers for you, Councilman Cook, on Monday. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's all I had to take you, Dr. Aldrich. Okay, and to answer your question, no, I have not talked to Sylvia. Um, Mr. Escobel, um, Dr. Aldrich had her mic, I guess, raised first, so go ahead. President <laughs> Johnson, through you. I guess one of the, I, my question is along the lines also of what Brian uh, was asking. Um, I'm wondering what the average uh, ticket is when uh, people are cited for marijuana or for paraphernalia. And I, because I, there was a comment made um, about the impact of revenue and that really is the only revenue that would be associated with decriminalization um, from what I've heard. So I'm wondering about that. Um, I'm also um, wondering about uh, in many of the federal grants, um, there are some stipulations about drug and alcohol issues uh, when in the realm of education. And I'm wondering how those impact some of the grants that our city might be applying for as far as recreational grants and things. I think that's a huge concern that I think we need to check on with our grant writer um, that we may be putting ourselves in jeopardy um, of not being able and eligible to apply for uh, federal grants or for grants that are available um, for some of the things we'd like to pursue if we go this route. So uh, any idea on what an average ticket is? Mr. President, through you to Dr. Aldrich, um, less than a quarter ounce in, in city court is a $325 bond. More than a quarter ounce is a $500 bond. Um, I just did a little pencil uh, uh, math on that and it, it, it uh, equates to about eighty thousand dollars in um in in fines if if they all equate that way i'm not sure how they work out in court but if they all went that route it would be about eighty thousand dollars and i just want to make sure i understand correctly that um by by not having the ability to check a municipal court box and sending it on then to the district court or a higher court after three tickets it becomes a felony. That's correct. That was recently passed in this legislature. In this legislative session, which means that for a lot of my former students who would be getting a third or a fourth ticket, it would become a felony and that would be on the record forever. Well, if we're talking juveniles, it'll be a little bit different. Um, mm, they, if it could be expunged, right? Well, and they also get referred to youth court, court. and, and um, that kind of short circuits that a little bit, but that is a potential for sure. I, I have so many concerns on so many levels when you, we start talking about ruining people's lives really literally forever um, by just simply checking a box because we decided to do this at the city level. Very good. Um, Mr. Escobel. Thank you, Mr. President, to you. I probably wouldn't even mention this if I hadn't known the family that Deputy Barnes had spoke about, but I did work with the, that young man's dad uh, on the railroad and was extreme violence that happened that night was the criminality aspect of it. And I don't mean any disrespect to you, Deputy Barnes, that was involved with the sale of a drug deal that went bad. And who knows what other... Uh, drugs or alcohol those those people were on cause of that so when we're talking about someone smoking a joint in their backyard not a joint in a beer not a joint in a shot of whiskey or joining a, a couple of pills only only a joint about the only extreme violence you're going to see there is them attacking a bag of cheetos and that's facts 
So, you know, you're just talking about that one thing and not a combination of things. The, the illegal part of it or the drug deal parts of it. So. Thank you, sir. Um, Councilman White, do you have any follow-up after your first? Very good. Councilman Roybal, Councilman Laybourne, any follow-up? Okay, Councilman Siebert, very good. Okay, so in regards for the call to the vote, because um, Jennifer's running the show from the back, um, when we do call for a vote, uh, we are going to show the hands of the eyes as well as the hands of the knees so that Jennifer can actually see them so that she can count this uh, for the record. So with that, I will go ahead and call for a vote. So all those in favor of this uh, ordinance change moving uh, forward to the March 27th, 2023 City Council meeting, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed? No. No. Hi, right. Jennifer, I already, I hope you got the counts of the notes, but I can already tell. Um, this motion does fail uh, through committee. Uh, this will be brought forth once again before the uh, city council on March 27th, next Monday at 6 p.m. At that point, it, no recommendation will happen from the committee. Um, just for clarification, that does not mean that the motion necessarily dies. What that means is that um, as president, the mayor will ask me um, what uh, the recommendation was of this body, and I will say there was no recommendation. But Mr. Mayor, uh, for the point of discussion, I make a, a motion to approve, and then if I have a second, then it opens up this discussion again. If for any reason it has the same vote that's very similar to tonight, after on March uh, 27th, at second reading, if everything stays uh, pretty much the same, then this motion would die at that time and it would not move forward from that point. So once again, um, you're all welcome to attend on March 27th, as I've told everybody, um, as you've probably seen in the media, we are pretty locked down with a lot of different controversies. And so expect a, a really, really full house if all of you show up as well as all the animal shelter shows up. So, um, Get here early and please make sure you eat before you come because we are in for a very, very long meeting. And so with that, um, because there is no recommendation, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much for all of your um, hard work and your passion for coming out tonight. Thank you again.